back again for another episode of I'm in a Car. And I have the, the honor of having Mandy Bujo with me in, in my car. Thank you for doing the show. Thanks for having me. Now, I, uh, I'm under the impression that maybe not everybody knows what you've been up to, but uh, I had the privilege of meeting Mandy at an EO event um, at the Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton. And it was uh, Mandy and Ron Foxcroft, and it was a group of maybe, you know, 16 of us. And you came down and, and, and did a talk about kind of, you know, I, I, my takeaway of it all was the pursuit of excellence. I'm, I'm not sure if that was like the title of the talk, but that's kind of what I got out of it. Yeah. And uh, I really, really thought it was awesome. So afterwards, I kind of mustered up the nerve to say, hey, Mandy, would you be cool to do an I'm in a car? And she's like, sure. Are I don't you know scared what you're that I was going to punch you? <laughs> yeah. or like... Maybe a little bit. I mean, I'm a big guy, but I'm still a little bit nervous. Yeah. Um, but... So there's reference to the punch. So maybe maybe you could uh, uh, maybe you could give people a little uh, introduction and what you've been up to and, and where you where you've been. Sure. Um, okay. So I am an Olympic boxer. Um, I am uh, an 11 time Canadian national champion, longest reigning Canadian champion in history. Woot. Yep. <laughs> Seriously, that's huge. Male or female? Yeah. Um, I've won two back to back gold medals at the Pan American Games. Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, uh, Olympic Games 2016, I finished fifth. Um, I probably traveled uh, close to 40 countries now, representing Canada. Awesome. Uh, for the last 12 years, so it's a, a great way to get to see the world. Yeah, that's um, cool. I didn't doing consider something you that. love and, and your passion. Yeah, I didn't really think I would be doing that, so um, it's really exciting. And um, yeah, so I've spent basically my entire life um, dedicated to my sport and I think it kind of evolved very slowly in the sense that I never kind of started boxing thinking oh I'm gonna go to the Olympics one day and like that's my dream it really kind of became something slowly you know when women's boxing first got accepted in the Olympics that was that happened in 2009 was the announcement um, and then that kind of became more of a reality yeah uh, for me and other females kind of across Canada and across the world um, which was exciting and then um, yeah so I guess something that I found fun to do and I would do three times a week became something that I did five times a week became something that I did every day of the week then became something I did three times a day Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah it just kind of happened slowly um, over time and um, just really you kind of like it's become like a, a whole new mindset um, and a whole new focus. So, yeah, so it's been very exciting. I've had the opportunity to meet some amazing people um, and then also started doing some more public speaking, which is how we met. Which was awesome. Um, which is something that I'm trying to do more of. So, <laughs> um, if uh, anyone out there is looking for a public speaker, let me know. Um, and most recently, I actually started um, down a little bit of a different path, trying to figure out kind of what's next for me and exploring. Um, you know my future beyond boxing yeah, and okay. that led me to um, my current position at Camino Tech in business development cool yeah so that's where I'm at now and it's a bit of a transition and it's kind of a time for me to kind of like take a, a little bit of a step back um, from where I'm at in my career and just think about okay what's going to be next for me um, what does that look like and this opportunity came up with Camino Tech in sponsorship which is something that as an athlete I've had to do my entire career because there's a, not a lot of funding <laughs> for Canadian athletes yeah. Um, so, and that like building uh, relationships and, and like partnerships with, with companies has always been something that I really enjoy. And I cool. think when this opportunity came up, I was like, I literally like, put a resume together that day and applied. I was like, awesome. you know what? I think I'm just going to give this a shot. It's not like I was looking for something, but it came up. And then sometimes I think that's kind of the best way um, to get involved in something. So, yeah, that's where I'm at now. And. Oh, I just turned the wrong, the wrong <laughs> way. It got really bright. I'll get off this road in a second. Um, yeah, so I did that, and I always have a lot of my own little projects on the go. I just started my own YouTube channel. Yeah? Um, yeah. So, so what's that about? It's very niche um, to boxing right now. Um, so it's really just teaching, um, trying to share some of the knowledge and like um, boxing tips and tricks that I've 
used in my career um, yep. to kind of get to the level that I was at. So it's really just sharing like training techniques right now. Cool. Um, but it is going to expand a little more into also the, the mindset of an athlete. And it's like you knew we were going to go with this. Yeah, that was a great segue. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the mindset of an athlete, and I will actually be partnering with um, my mental performance coach or sports psychologist, Kim Dawson from uh, Laurier University, um, to actually put some of those segments together because I think that's something that um, not a lot of athletes really use enough. I think sports psychology is something that I've used a lot in my career and I've always advocated about. Right. Um, but there are a lot of athletes that never tap into that because they just automatically think like they hear the word psychologist and they like, think, yeah. like oh I don't have a problem I don't need a psychologist <laughs> I don't need to be on a couch yeah so it doesn't they don't really understand what that really means when it comes to sport um, so yeah so it's something that I want to kind of like shed more light on because it's helped me so much in my career right cool. so it's gonna pop this up. yeah um, that is really cool because mm -hmm. I wanted to just touch on that um, kind of maybe to start the conversation around that mindset and we were, we were just talking about it before we kind of got into into the drive around when, when you were doing your talk in Hamilton and, and the way you're kind of approaching the situations that you were in and and the, the, the boat that you were kind of you know walking us through and it was it seemed like there was really two opponents mm -hmm. and one of them is the person that's trying to punch you yep. and the other <laughs> one was between your ears yeah so what I found is there's a typical correlation and like a really high correlation of someone's ability to be successful in life, whether it's sport, whether it's relationships, whether it's business, and their mindset for success. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could maybe translate a little bit about how you've approached the, the mindset component of success and how that may translate into other aspects of your life. Yeah. Um... I think like it's definitely a huge part of it I think like you know even small things like you know self-talk like we all do it we're all talking to ourselves at some point or another you oh, know yeah, like a, you're constantly like telling yourself different things and I think that is a lot that's kind of where things start right like are you negative about things like does something happen and you think oh that always happens to me or you know of course uh, my luck or you know what I mean like the just, victim mindset yeah so just saying small things like that I think is it gets you into that like negative mindset and I think you have to be positive and you have to be um, you know thinking positively to yourself and it and it becomes something you can actually train so it's like um, just switching those thoughts like the second that you have a thought that is a negative thought or is kind of going against maybe a goal that you're working towards whether it's in business or in sport it's about changing that mindset immediately so the second like a thought comes into your head and for me like sport related would be more like you know uh, uh, what if I'm gonna you know what if this happens in the fight and, you know I'm gonna lose this fight or you start thinking about outcome it's really about turning that around and be like no I need to focus on you know moving to my right very specific things that you need to focus on and it's like actually stopping yourself in your mind and changing those thoughts cool and I think the more that you can get used to doing that the more naturally it starts to happen right it's a muscle memory exactly right physically just as much as it is uh, mentally so um, yeah doing those things um, always having goals to work towards right like having having something that you know like that's your target that's something that you want to get to is the same in sport and in business big time um, there's so many so many correlations I think like right now there's this hot topic about you know fail early fail fast fail often yeah, you know, yeah. like that that you hear with entrepreneurs and um, it's the same thing in sport right you learn more from your losses than you do from your wins sure right yeah well if you won what did you learn yeah you're good exactly you lost but you're like, just I gotta get better exactly you're less likely to go back and evaluate okay how was that performance you just think I just need to keep doing that yeah because it's working right right when you lose it makes you take a step back and make you think okay um, what did I do well what did I do wrong like how do I need to improve that um, so that you can kind of change that strategy and, and move forward with something See, that's so cool. There's a whole bunch of things that you just said there i love to just touch on quickly. Yeah. One of them, the first thing that came to mind, so I used to just be this shit golfer, and not to say I'm a good golfer by any stretch of the imagination, but I would always go up and worry about duffing the ball. And then one person said, what are you thinking about right now? I was like, I don't want to duff this. He said, well, why don't you think about hitting the ball clean? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, huh? He's like, yeah, just think about hitting the ball clean. 
think about what you want to do, not what you don't, don't want to do. do. Exactly. And my score went down. Yeah. And like within weeks. Yeah. Like it no, wasn't like I didn't have the skills. It was literally my mindset was yeah. in my own way. It's huge. And like, so when I would sit down with a sports psychologist right before competition, we often would write out, you know, three or four things that we want to work on. And, and sometimes I would start out and one of those things would be, you know, um, don't drop my hands. Right. Or something, you right, know what right. I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You would, you would add a negative to word in there, and then keep them up. Yeah, so that's when we would always sit down and be like, okay, let's look at this, and then how do we change that? Okay, no, like we need to make that turn that into a positive, right? Or turn that into something that you're already doing, um, as opposed to looking at it um, from a negative. So yeah, very, very similar to awesome to that mindset. And then I think the other thing that you mentioned, which I thought was really cool, around the the loss or the failure, and and using that time to evaluate what went well, what didn't go well, what to do next time. And and this I, I hear a lot um, is this idea around, oh, I should have done this, mm-hmm. as opposed to next time I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And it seems so subtle and really insignificant, but in my experience with training people, uh, specifically in sales, mm-hmm. the should seems to be a negative mindset. Oh, I yeah. should have, I, they're yeah. shooting on themselves. Yeah. Whereas, okay, that didn't work. Next time, I'm going to do this, yeah. and that framing. I think yeah. just to your yeah. point, taking that next step. Yeah. Right. So it's not like looking back and regretting what you did. It's okay. This didn't work, but what am I going to do differently? Super right. Cool. And putting it into action. Awesome. Action words. Right. So that's something that, for me, when I'm setting goals, I often, um, which I, I kind of touched on when I was um, speaking, is I write it as though it's already happened. So, right? t- so talk about that quickly. Yeah. So like if I'm, if I'm, um, if one of my goal is, goals are to kind of like, um, to always move my head after a combination, I will actually write it as the, like exactly like that. I always move my head after a combination, even if it's something that I'm working on. It's not that I always necessarily do it, but the more that I can put that into my head, even when I'm, when I'm thinking about it. So even just like reading that kind of like makes me like mentally see it it's like you're there yeah exactly so it makes it feel more familiar so that when I actually get in the ring it just becomes more of a natural thing that happens oh, right? man. And, and and so as you did that what kind of progress did you see well it's it's a lot quicker right it's just like going in going into training sometimes people go into training and they're not necessarily they just go and train and they think they're gonna get better or you go and you do sales and it's it's always the same Process. It's going to ring twice. We have someone calling us. Yeah, there we it's go. Garth Bigelow. Hi, Garth. <laughs> but we can't take the call right now. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, but it's always the same process. So I think if you um, if you look at that differently, right? Like, I kind of lost my train of thought. That's okay. Garth, <laughs> Garth, Garth called us. Up. <laughs> well, no, it's that idea of going into the, with the mindset already happening. And when you go yeah. into training, as opposed to just training. Yeah, so you don't want to just go to the gym and train just to train and assume that you're going to get better, right? You have to go there with focus, right? So if your focus, for me, I ha- like everyone learns a bit differently. I'm more focused when I actually write things down. So when I'm going to the gym and I'm going to spar and I'm preparing for something, I will actually always write three or four things that I am going to work on when I get to the gym. Yeah. So that way when I'm there, that those are the things that I'm thinking of and then not only that but after when I get home I will take time and I will write like a little paragraph did it work you know was I able to maybe implement it in one part but maybe not another part like how did that feel like I write down kind of like how that process worked and it just helped me kind of like get through it and see okay so maybe this time I was able to do it for five minutes maybe next time I'm going to be able to do it for seven minutes you know and you kind of like track your progression and see maybe what you did that day that that might have changed kind of how that played out yeah that's super cool and I think there's a discipline to that yeah oh absolutely and I think a lot of people don't like the idea that there's discipline is so success is associated with discipline yeah well it's kind of hard to get success with that like some people get lucky luck can be in it sometimes not, but not often not often you have to work hard if you want if you want to be successful that's for sure so when i mean you're, you're when you're talking about the the level of excellence at which you were performing it's like top of the world like you mm-hmm. literally you know you, you finished fourth in the olympics it's like fourth in the entire world of people that are competing at what you do mm-hmm. that is wicked high <laughs> level it must have been a stinger too like, I mean, yeah, it is. Fourth, but still, yeah, it's wicked yeah. high, right? <laughs> of course. So, like, the highest in the world. Yeah. 
Uh, so can you just give us a glimpse in terms of what discipline looks like from your perspective with regard to how it impacts success? Um, you know what? Um, for me, discipline is... It's, it becomes more of a mindset. It becomes more of... You know, when I'm preparing for the Olympics, like, that is all I think about. And when I'm training, that is all I think about. And I mean, to the point of when I'm at the grocery store and I look at an expiry date, I relate that to, you know, my next competition or like, you know, my next, like, that is always running through my mind. And anytime something happens in my life, whether, uh, you know, I'd be invited to something or, you know, my friends want to go out, something as simple as that, I would always play through my mind. Is this going to help me get closer to my goal? If yes, I do it. If no, I say no. Yeah, and cool. it's about eliminating the things that are not going to help you get to where you want to go um, so that you can stay focused on, on what your goal is. And that could be the same in, in any walk of life, right? And it's, Yeah, big time. But it's, it's also just you have to be like you're like laser vision in a bubble. That's all you think about, right? right. And, and sometimes that's like to the extreme. For Olympic athletes, you almost have to be to the extreme because, I mean, you have to be doing what others aren't willing to do big time but I think that's life like if if, yeah. if for success yeah I mean people don't have to do that but I think that's where uh, and you know I don't want to pigeonhole any group of people but I feel like there is a uh, groundswell of wannabe entrepreneurs or starting to be entrepreneurs that think that there is this magic key to success mm -hmm. and it you know if I build a technology or if I, you know, raise enough money or if I build something cool, I'm, I'm successful. And I think a lot of people lose or don't see quite yet how important it is to have that laser focus. And uh, there, there was um, a really cool book. There's lots of them about focus, but this one cool one called The One Thing. Okay. And it's all about this idea, right? Laser yeah. focus, creating priorities. Uh, making sure that the time is in the day to be done what is most important towards those goals. And one of the questions that come from it is, uh, what can I do today that if I get done, everything else becomes easier and or unnecessary? And so it's this idea of compounding solutions that will fix lots of things, not just the fires of today. Um, but it's this idea of focus. And, and one of the things that comes from it, and you just reminded me of it, is this thought of if you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And it takes, I think, a discipline to only say yes to things that are helping you accomplish your goal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult. <laughs> it I is can only imagine, especially that kind of goal, because yeah. it limits you from a lot of stuff. Yeah. And and I'm not going to say that that like that is not easy because I've had a lot of problems saying no in the past, and um, like a lot of people could attest to this. But it's you know, it's it's hard sometimes. Like even for me in the community, like I want to be involved in a million things and I want to be doing a million projects, but your energy can only take you so far. And like, even for me, like if, if you know, there's some media interview or some, something happening, you might not think that's physically tiring, um, but it's mentally tiring and then it's still going to affect you, right? So you have to think about kind of, you know, what's, what's the effect of, of kind of that energy that you're putting out and how is that gonna kind of like translate into where you're at with your goal and your progress. Big time. So and that's yeah. not easy. It's not easy. And I've had a lot of people like over the years, some of my mentors like really sit me down and say like, hey, like you need to stop saying um, yes to everything. You need to say no to this stuff. And if you want me to say no for you, I'll say no for you. And wow. I've had, I've actually had people where I kind of direct um, things to and they either help me by taking care of them or they say no to them. And it used to be a big thing for me for funding, right? Like I always used to think, well, I gotta go to this event because I might meet my next sponsor. I might right. meet my next, you know, so you're always like thinking like that because as an athlete, you also have to have that business mindset of marketing yourself and branding yourself and all of that, right? So it, it's like you have to almost play two different roles. So that was, I think the, the hardest part for me was, was trying to figure out, okay, what things are really important versus like, you know, what do I have to do versus what do I not necessarily have to do. <laughs> and, and that in itself, so, yeah. the prioritizing yeah. is, is I, I find has been a struggle. I mean, I, I think I'm getting better at it now and I'm starting to make some strides with, you know, identifying what my core priorities are. Yeah. And it's really helped focus my attention and my time and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And it's actually kind of freeing. Actually, it's, I think it, once you go through the discipline, I think yeah, it's actually exactly. quite freeing <laughs> yeah. because it makes it easier to be like, that doesn't fall in line with what yeah, I'm trying to accomplish. Exactly. But setting those priorities and 
knowing which priorities are the right ones to set, I mean, that's not easy. Going after an Olympic gold, I mean, that's not an easy decision. Yeah. Like, yeah. going after an Olympic <laughs> competition at any level, that's not an easy decision. But once you make it, I guess it kind of makes things more clear. Yeah, it does. But then you also, like you said, you have other kind of things that you have to think about as far as, like, your brand awareness and your... Um, you know, fundraising and all the stuff that sometimes can affect your 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 long time your long term goal, right? And I guess once you get that narrow focus and knowing exactly where it is that you want to go, it does help you figure it out. And having a, a really supportive team around you also makes that um, decision uh, and those decisions a lot easier. And just people like understanding, you know. And I think sometimes, like for me, I used to always think like, oh. If I turn them down, they're going to think like, oh, Mandy's so mean. She won't actually do this thing and it's for charity. And you know what I mean? It's like I've done a million things already, but like, you know what I mean? So it's trying to, trying to, you know, let people know what you're doing and show that you're like appreciative, that they want you to be a part of something, but you can't say yes to everything because then you would just have have no time to to really focus on what's important. And it's, yeah, it kind of goes back to a lot of kind of adages around like, you know, if you're something for everyone, you're something for no one. Yeah. If you try to do everything, you'll do nothing well. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's all this kind yeah. of ideas around it, but it's not easy to practice. No, it's not. <laughs> so, can you share us a little story about kind of one of your favorite bouts and, and the, the mindset that you went through and the kind of the battle that you went between your ears and how you handled it? <laughs> sure. Um, I'll share my favorite story about my American opponent. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's too kind. Yes. Um, I guess I, like a little bit of background to it. So going into um, the Pan American Games um, in 2015, um, being the reigning champion. Um, all eyes on you. All eyes on me in Toronto. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So it was a, a huge event. Um, but going into the finals of that event, I was actually the underdog because the girl I was playing against, this American opponent, she had just won a world title. Um, so recent world champion, she was on like a 22 fight win streak oh. and she had actually beaten me three times. Out of three? Three out of three. Wow. Yeah. And it was always really close fights, like it'd be like one point or a split decision or whatever, but somehow the judges were always favoring her. Hmm. So it was kind of something that I looked at obviously going into this competition, like she was going to be that main person that I needed to beat. Right. Um, it's like the setup of a movie. Yeah, yeah. It was like a perfect scenario. Um, but yeah, so basically I guess some of the mindset stuff that we were talking about, like what happened and a lot of people don't see this when they watch the fight on TV, but this fight actually started like in the morning. Right. Um, so what normally happens is when we go, um, to a competition and we weigh in in the morning, you go in and there's like a room, everybody's in there. Um, you check your weight, you, you get your medical done. Um, and, and that's that, but there's usually lots of people that morning I, I walked in and it was just me and my opponent. Hmm. And I'm like, this is really weird. Like, no so not here. typical. Not typical at all. But I kind of looked at it right away with like, hmm, I'm going to make this work to my advantage. Um, so I kind of grabbed my stuff and the room was huge. But instead of like going somewhere else, I decided I was going to go like right next to her and kind of like rub her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just to kind of like get into her head to show her that I think she kind of assumed that, you know, because she's this world champion and uh, the Americans, I guess, get treated differently. Um, she thought that she should have been treated with just differently, right? Right, right, right. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to show her that, no, I wasn't going to do that. Like, this was going to be a different fight than it had been in the past and yeah, yeah, yeah. all these other competitions. So I think for me, just doing something that simple, like, gave me an advantage. But were you a little bit nervous doing it? No, I was very kinda, confident. Like, I was, yeah. when I got there and it, it, like, and I saw it, it's like, I didn't even have to think. Like, I knew exactly what I needed to do in that moment. Cool. Because I had mentally prepared um, for this opponent, right? right? And I knew she was kind of like the type of person that tries to get into your head and, and tries to do those things. And um, actually, like, leading into this, um, my sports psychologist um, who was working with us for the team, he's a runner. He was reading this Runner's World magazine and she was in there and it was like, she was talking about like all this stuff about like always having to be first. And, and we actually took this and analyzed it and thought about, okay, what is our game plan going to be moving forward? So this we, is her MO. Yeah. How do we flip it? Yeah, exactly. So we actually analyzed that and it was like, you know, going into the competition, I knew I was going to have to be first. I was going to have to like get her out of her comfort zone. She's a, a very emotional fighter. How am I going to draw that emotion out of her so yeah, she's yeah. not on her game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was a perfect way to do that. Awesome. Yeah. So then later when we actually got to the venue, um, 
she was kind of warming up in my area so I was in the the blue corner she was in the red corner and she kind of came over and she was on my side in, in, oh, in my area yeah um, which was kind of funny um, and my coach noticed it and was kind of like hey like do you want to like go warm up somewhere else because it's kind of weird when you're warming up right next to your opponent right yeah, yeah. and I remember thinking like no I think she's trying to get into my head now for what I did this morning so I'm going to stay right here and um, and just do my warm up and I think that again it just helped me build confidence so like yeah. as the day went on I was just building confidence and just getting in her right head. yeah and then for me that was mentally going in there with a different mindset of cool. like being prepared to you know really take this fight to her um, and come out on top so it was it was fun because I knew it really like um, did something to her when we got into the ring and we have to touch gloves usually at the beginning yeah. and um, she refused to touch gloves she kind of just like turned around once the referee said touch gloves so I knew right off the bat I was like I'm <laughs> I, I'm already one up oh that's <laughs> um, so cool so it's like all little things right that happen but for me guerrilla she, warfare yeah she she might not even have realized it the way I realized it but right. as I was going through the day like I said I was building confidence and um, that was what I needed to get um, to get that win uh at the, in the finals, her. yeah, and then I ended up beating her, so Hello. it was, yeah, it was awesome. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah. So, so. Uh, what, what was the outcome? Like, did you guys go to finish all the rounds? Or you yeah, yeah, no, or? no, no. It went to it went to um, a decision. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, and then I ended up winning it. So it was it was super exciting, right? For me, being at home, um, and the fun thing about that was nobody knew kind of my game plan going in or all of that stuff that had happened throughout the day. Um, but the amount of people that actually came up to me like right after the fight and said like, oh my God, you could actually like see her breaking down like mentally. Like it wasn't like she was getting tired or anything, but right. she was in her corner she was yelling at her coaches and right. she was just off. Right. Cool. And it's funny that how many people noticed that. And to me that was rewarding because I thought like no one knew what my game plan was. Cool. Right. And just to be like that evident about it, because normally you can't really see that. Sure. I might be able to read that from her, but the audience being able to read that was, um, just really rewarding for me to be able to know that that game plan worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So in classic, I'm in a car fashion. I usually ask people at the end uh, okay. if there's something you can go back to tell yourself that you wish you knew then that you know now. Kind of when you started this career of excellence or this pursuit of excellence or just kind of you know being a, a high performing human. Mm -hmm. What would you go back and tell yourself? Ooh, tough question. Um, honestly, I would say more along the lines of like really enjoy the moment and I think when you're like in something like I'm in like life moves so fast and I think like now I'm looking back and I'm like oh my god I boxed for the last 14 years like where did that time go <laughs> and along that time like I like I said I had so many amazing experiences and traveled to amazing countries and um, you know, met some really incredible people, like been on stage with people that I, sh you know what I mean? Like for, for events and stuff that like, just now that I think about it, like every once in a while, someone will be like, Oh, do you want to, can you be in this parade or something? And I'll kind of look back and I'm like, Oh yeah, I was in a parade. Like that's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or, um, like I was on Lenny Kravitz. He had a concert. I was on stage with him and, um, it was just kind of like you don't Surreal. really think about it when yeah. it's happening because it just your life goes so quickly um so just really like trying to i don't know if there's a way you could just bottle that and like well you know it's slow it, it down well it's, it's interesting though there was somebody i was talking to about neuro-linguistic programming and i'm not sure if you've heard of nlp before no. but i won't get into the whole thing but anyway the long story short there's this concept of anchoring a moment yeah and so um in this instance this person used the the bridge of their thumb oh i have heard of this so yeah. that when they experience something positive they squeeze the bridge of their thumb and they anchor that moment and take a, a take a quick moment like yeah. two seconds yeah to just consciously say i'm going to anchor this yeah. moment right now yeah. and and this person that shared this said they've been doing it for about a year now and so it's been amazing because it's a similar idea yeah. so life's been passing me by so fast yeah and so tough so many times that sometimes i forget about the little things that are just so great in my life yeah he said in the last year, he said my whole mentality has shifted because I, I, I have all these anchor points. He's like, you know, last week I had like 12 anchors, you know, it's, that's amazing, you know, I'm living mm -hmm. a life where I can do that. And so I just think to your point, yeah. if there was a way to do it, that might be one of those yeah. ways. Yeah, no, that is a, that is actually a really great idea, but just try and find ways, right, to 
and really just enjoy the moment and enjoy the journey because I know that's kind of cliche and people sure. say it all the time but it's like when you actually kind of get close to what could be the end of a career or something you kind of look back and think like oh my god that happened so quickly and all the amazing things that you're able to do but you're never really going to remember every detail of it right sure. so like what are those important moments and important things to kind of like draw forward that you're going to be able to use in that like next stage of your life cool yeah well thank you for doing this yeah thanks right. for having me thanks see you guys see you later